I'm gonna walk you through how we're currently shooting bottled drinks. We've looked at a can, but now we're looking at glass. I'm gonna go through the whole setup, the kit, the theory, the ethos, everything. So we're shooting on the GFX 100. We've got a 90 mil lens here at F16, 100 ISO, 125th of a second. We've got the canvas MF, and we're triggering the flashes with a pocket wizard up here. Now the flashes themselves, we're firing two score row packs. Now the important thing here is, Every one of my camera bags has a Sharpie in it with a bit of tape so I don't lose it. Each of these packs has now been labeled just with gaffer's tape, which comes off really easy. Key, glow, back left, back right. It's a really easy way to stay organized. I can control all the lights from the camera. So without having to move from this area, everything is in play. Cool, if you swing back around, then we'll get a... It is relative to the composition. If we change the camera position, the lighting no longer works. So we've got to get this first. It's like editing a video and then change, choosing or changing the music afterwards. It doesn't work. You've got to get the composition dialed in. We've taken a frame. We've got an almost black frame. Again, it's not perfectly black. So we've got the blinds open so you can see. But ideally, we'd shut the blinds for this sort of work. So we'd want it to be absolutely perfect. The first thing we're going to do is choose our quality of light. And of course, we want hard light. It's the current trend. It's also the style of work I do. And we've got our key light up here. And this is just a head with no modifier whatsoever. So we'll turn this one on. So here's our key light. It's above the product. It's slightly off center as well. because I want a slight direction to the light. I don't want the light coming in and hitting the bottle because it'll just be like glare everywhere but I want there to be some direction to the light. So we'll grab a quick frame of this whilst trying not to blind ourselves. There we go. And we'll see what we're getting. We'll make adjustments based on that. Now it's quite a big product. It's got quite a big bit of glare on there as well, but I'm liking the general look here. So what we're gonna do next is raise the light up a little bit. We need to be much higher. I want the light to be harder. We've also got a lot of fall off top to bottom. So I'm gonna crank this up. We'll go as high as we can, get it as far away as possible so the lighting is more even on the product. I'm not sure how long it takes to get to the top. I may have to jump cut this. Still going, still going. There we go, we're at the top. That looks nice and precarious. Let's grab another frame of that quickly. There we go. Beautiful, okay, it's much less harsh. We've still got this really crisp light on the top of the label, but it's not so much that it's distracting from the reading. It looks a bit different when we're zoomed all the way out. We've lost the light down here. The drink is muddy. We've got a lot of work to do. The first thing I want to sort is the label though. So we've got a mirror just down here, and this mirror's on a little stand, and we're gonna use it just to light the label. It's a really good shape for this sort of label. There we go. So we'll go from that, hopefully, to a nicely lit label. And what you'll notice is the two black lines, perfect, there we go. The two black lines either side of this bottle, they're the absence of light around the background. So all the ambient around there is black for the camera, so it comes up like that. We have to move the background left and right to either change the thickness on either side. Now I've got it pretty even here, which I like. We've got the key light slightly off center. It's slightly coming in from the brew side, which I also like. But I want to get that background to pop a little bit more and the drink looks really dead at the moment. So let's turn the background lights on. Now our key lights on, what power we got that on? Is it, it's about 500 watts. Our background lights, they're at 12.5 joules. We're talking joules for the rest of this because this isn't joules at the bottom. Let's get that to come through. Brilliant, so what we've got here is a much nicer glow. So we've not lit through the back of the bottle, but we've let the light hit the orange background and bounce back through. I'm liking that so far, but I still want a little bit more going on in that. So I've already set up a light back here with a grid. We'll just turn that light on. Really low power, minimum power, which I believe is like, here we go, it's 12 joules. And we'll just get that to pull a little bit of glow through. Brilliant. Now, of course, the downside to this frame here is we now have an orange glow down one side of the bottle that we don't want. And this is where back plates come in. We want the glow, but we don't want that black bit. Now, of course, we could get a million bits of card and flag it to our heart's content. 
or we can get this one frame here, turn that light off, take a second frame and make that the back plate and we'll merge the two together in post. So we're getting to a good point here. We've got a nice bottle, but the bottle itself doesn't look great. So we're gonna style the bottle. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab a cloth to wipe it with, which I've left at the other side of the studio. And this is just a nice glass cleaning cloth. Let's give that a nice clean down there. Now, of course, if we were shooting this for Iron Brew, we'd get the bottles and the labels separately. This label is not stuck on straight on the bottle. There's nothing I can do about that. We'll just have to make do. We do want it to look chilled and refrigerated, but what's really important here is that we don't chill the entire bottle. This area right at the top should have no frosting on it whatsoever. I'm going to turn this modeling lamp off quickly before we set fire to a grid. Is it off already? It's on. We're off, we're good. Oops, then I've got it off. If you leave the modeling lamps on with these grids here, they, they tend to overheat and start burning. So we're going to get the spritz on now, very gently, but what I'm going to do is just cover up the area I don't want spritzing. So we sort of want it to where the liquid falls. We'll try and use this cloth as a bit of a, a block. There we go. So we'll grab our spritz. This is half glycerin, half water. Just want to try and not get this on all your kit. Got a little bit heavy as always. I'm no stylist, that's for sure. Grab a frame of this. And then again, a frame without that background light as well, uh, the glow light. So we get glow light and no glow light. And between those there, we've got our frame. I've overspritzed it, obviously. Let's, uh, let's see if we can fix that a little bit. A nice wipe. Now this is not necessarily my favorite style of spritzing of a bottle. It's just sort of what's in trend at the moment. Um, and the trends on spritzing change all the time. We go big, we go small. There's always a slightly different, there we go. Different look to it. At the moment they want it watery and drippy. Um, it's just how it is. Brands will tell you what they want. Uh, the, the really fine spray and the over stylized sprays kind of died off now. Sometimes they want the label to be clear but the bottle to be spritzed, despite the fact that obviously that would never happen. So we do a lot of this, a lot of masking of spritz. Let's go in there again. And really you want a stylist doing this because every time you touch this stuff, it's all over your hands and then it's all over your camera gear and it never really comes off. There we go. Let's just try that. I'm going to try slightly rotating the bottle a little bit. There we go. So this is again quite popular, just that light spritzing. He's a bit more on the bottom, I think. And then we'll just check that reflector. Perfect. There. Yeah, I quite like that and that works well. Now, there's one thing I would be concerned about, which is that hot spot. Although it looks fine zoomed in, it does bother me a bit at the moment. So I'm just gonna go and grab a net finger and grab an extra frame. So this will just take a bit of that heat off. Just come up from the light above, there we go. And this is just a tiny bit of net. Make a marginal difference. If it's not enough, we can double up. So it needs a little bit more maybe. And again, normally we would, you know, put these in properly, but this will do for this example. Just trying to get the right, right bit of light flagged. There we go. So a net, this reduces exposure. So rather than just getting rid of exposure, like a flag will block it, this will just 
soften it and reduce it. We have big ones as well. Sometimes we might want to grab a big open net like this and just soften the whole shot a little bit. Or maybe just take, take it to the label. And again, we'd normally get these in with a C stand just to keep them in place. But I'm happy with that. I like the hard reflection, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. They get rid of all of the reflections on the bottle and all the catch lights, and it just looks like a CGI image. What we want here is it to look like a photograph and to feel like a photograph. We don't want this very dead image. We'll tidy up a bit of that hot spot so it's, it's in a better place and it's not interfering with the reading of the image, but we still want it. If we just lose it all together, what's the point in having hard light? We'll just CGI it. This is generally what people are wanting at the moment. This tends to be the trend. But of course, there's always old fashioned brands who still want the old gradients down the side and the vignette in the background. But it is few and far between right now. So this, this is how we're doing it. And of course, we adapt this in a million different ways. We'll bring flags in at the side. We'll use a different modifier. We'll use a hard light. We'll use a, a star point light or all these different things that we can do. Sometimes to stop these bouncing in, we'll get a bit of cine foil. I'll just grab some show. This is like Roscoe. This is Roscoe Cine Foil. It's basically black tin foil. Um, super sharp, so if you're a little bit careful with it. Got a lot of it there. <laughs> so we'll grab a bit of this, grab some scissors. Let's cut a decent chunk off. And if we're worried about, say, the, the background lights bleeding into the bottle too much, instead of getting flags out, what we'll often do is take this tin foil, and just build a bit of a DIY snoot on there. You kind of like crinkle it into place, maybe a bit of tape to hold it, and then you've, you've stopped all the spill coming through. And it's just a bit of black foil. And the best thing about it is you can reuse it. So when I take it off there, so just pop that in place. There we go, it's got rid of those catch lights that were happening before. So now when we turn the keys back on, we'll have a much more contrasty bottle. Very unevenly label printed bottle, but much more contrasty. And then we just reuse it. So we take this off now. And that's good to be used to something else. Let's fold it up. And generally, I just chuck this on the assisting trolley, and then that's good to go for somebody else to use. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to shoot next, and I'll make sure we get a video in on that. But for now, this is how we shoot bottles. Is that all okay, do you think? Did it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs>